Welcome back to a gorgeous May afternoon and welcome to the equally gorgeous, ooh, controversial, NK800 CF Moto. So this is a Chinese motorcycle. Now hold on a minute, don't all jump onto me. This is the CF Moto Ranger bike. So this is basically the KTM uh, CF Moto collaboration. You know, KTM own I think 51% of CF Moto. Well, this bike uses the KTM 790 engine and frame. And then CF Moto have done their own suspension, you know, their design, etc. So this bike has the same engine as a 790 Duke, the same 93 horsepower, the same 79 newton meters of torque, but it's got CF Moto's own spin on the styling. This bike styling has actually won, won awards. This has got the red dot award for design, which is the first ever Chinese motorcycle to win that award. And uh, you can see it's a, it's a well-styled machine. Look at that exhaust tasty. So if you want to know a little bit more about the CF Moto NK800, this is the advanced version and the advanced version's got a few extras, little, a few little extras which we'll go into as part of this ride. But uh, if you're interested in the CF Moto, make yourself comfortable, get yourself a nice oh, gin and tonic, a beer, a shandy, get yourself a nice beverage and chopsy roll the intro. It's actually, I actually decided I quite like the look of this bike. I think there's certain elements of design. I will do a proper walk around of this, but it's got more than a, a touch of sort of MV about the rear end and about the exhaust a little bit as well. You've probably the least favorite thing is this, you know, this funny rear fender, rear fender mudguard number plate holder. You know, we all prefer something at the bottom there, don't we? Don't like that. I don't know why manufacturers keep doing that because you know, the feedback always is no one likes that. No one likes these things on the back of the bike. Nobody like. I don't know anyone who says they like those. If you like those, let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, there she is. Let's jump on, see how she rides. So swinging your leg over it, it actually feels like a bigger motorcycle than the 790 Duke. And as I said, you know, this is based on the 790 Duke with the KTM CF Moto partnership. So engine and frame is 790 Duke, but the rest of the bike is complete CF Moto. And it's a, it's a bigger, it's a bigger bike. I think for a bigger guy, it's more motorcycle here than what there is on the 790 Duke. And it still weighs, I think 186 kilos curb weight. I'm not sure if that's with fuel though, or whether that's you know ready to run but without fuel. It depends what day of the week it is to how these manufacturers are, are measuring the weight of their motorcycles, doesn't it? So pang it on, you push this forward, brings the screen on, and there's two sorts of displays. There's this one with the big rev counter, I think is the best one. Or there is this, which then integrates with your phone or your, your navigation if you've got uh, Android Auto. I'm um, uh, sorry if you've got this Apple CarPlay you must have not it doesn't work with Android Auto at the moment unfortunately don't know if that's going to come but that display is the best one. Powering it up it actually sounds it sounds like the 790 Duke it sounds really quite nice you know popples and burbles there's a nice tone from that exhaust yeah it sounds decent Now this is the advanced version of this bike. It comes in two versions. The advanced has the keyless, I think the quick shifter blipper, but the phone integration and the Android, and sorry, the Apple CarPlay. So that's what you get with the advanced. I think that's all you get with the advanced. And I think the advanced is an extra 500 pounds. So this bike in the advanced trim costs seven and a half thousand pounds. So, you know, a, a reasonably priced motorcycle, you know, it's, uh, I think that puts it £500 cheaper than the 790 Duke, which I think is £8,000, because it was, it was £7,000, but it was on offer last year, if you remember. 
So this is a seven and a half thousand pound motorcycle. I think it works out about 99 pounds a month on PCP. So all very reasonable, but to ride it, it feels, it feels, you know, the engine obviously feels exactly like the 790 Duke. No surprise there, because it is. The mapping on it feels really good as well. I think, you know, CF Motor have done their own mapping on this machine and it all feels very nice, you know, it all feels very familiar. I think the one thing which isn't as good as the 790 Duke on this bike is the suspension. So this has KYB suspension. Uh, it's fully adjustable up front, but it's only adjustable for damping and, and preload on the rear. So the WP suspension on the 790 Duke is definitely, I would say, superior feeling to this. I mean, there's nothing right. This is, I think, a bit more comfortable. This is a bit more comfortable, I think, than the, than the, than the 790 Duke. So maybe a bit, bit less of a performance orientated machine, this and a little bit more comfort than the 790. The quick shifter blipper works okay on this, but I'd say it doesn't feel quite as faultless as it does on the 790. And as you go down on the blipper, it can sometimes sort of lurch a little bit, which I've noticed. So I don't think perhaps the overall sort of fueling, uh, look at that buzzard, look at him. I don't think the overall fueling is quite as good as the 790 Duke. And you know, maybe the, the, like I said, the way the quick shifter blipper operates, maybe not quite as good as the 790 Duke. I mean, I don't want to make this whole video just about how does this bike compare to the 790 Duke, but obviously it's based on the same engine, it's got the same frame. You can't help but bring some comparisons to the, to the KTM version of this bike, which is also made by CF Moto. But I think with this one, you know, CF Motor are doing their own mapping of the machine, all, all that sort of stuff. You know, whereas with the 790 models, they're taking the KTM map. So I think that's the difference. And I'd say it feels a little bit nicer, a tiny bit, on the KTM compared to this. But this is still absolutely fine. And of course, you get a lot more things standard on this. See how it's launching it? I don't think that quick shifter is quite right. As I'm going down on the quick shifter, it's as it's revving the bike to blip it's actually lunging forward it shouldn't do that i'm not quite sure that's 100 percent correct and as it should be and that's putting me off actually using the quick shifter blipper a little bit and that's what i've been noticing occasionally it would do that and that's what i'm talking about i mean that could be a slight fault on this bike but yeah that that isn't great come on mate out of the way plenty of punch from this engine I mean it's a really impressive this engine parallel twin as I say 93 horsepower I think 73 new meters of torque and I've said it before you know this this parallel twin platform of KTM's because it is a KTM engine is absolutely superb you know, it's, it's got a great note it's, it delivers great top end great mid-range great initial pickup and it's the same on this bike. The front brakes are J1 brakes, which I think is the same as the 790 Duke. And the brakes actually feel the same as the 790 Duke. But because the suspension, I think, is a bit softer, obviously you get a bit more fork dive. So I don't think the braking is quite as good as it is on the 790. I mean, the 790 is a real sharp, a really sharp little scalpel of a bike. You know, it's superb. And I've spent a fair bit of time on that bike. And uh, I have to say, it's really, really good. So, you know, if you've never ridden a 790, you're going to jump on this and think it's absolute, absolutely amazing. But I don't think it's quite as nice as the, as the 790 version. But I guess you have to decide if you... To get the 790 is the same spec as this, or not as high a spec as this, because you'll never have the keyless and the Apple CarPlay integration and the other little features which this has. But you'd have to add the tech pack, wouldn't you? And to get the quick shifter blipper. So even though the, the, the 790 is an eight gram bike, you're probably looking sort of eight and a half to nine by the time you've added everything you want. Whereas for seven and a half, or just under on this, you've got all those extras included. So, and you could argue it's a better looking motorcycle if you don't like orange. So let's just have a little bit of a closer look at the NK 
800. So starting at the front of the bike, you've got this sort of real statement piece headlight on this machine, haven't you? With like the LED bars here and a full LED light in the middle there, like a twin, twin projector headlight bulb. And these like little almost ears on the top here. I mean, the styling of this bike, it's a little bit Marmite, I guess, but you know, you've got to give credit where credit's due. I mean, there's some influences. I mean, that back end shouts to me, Brutale MV. <laughs> there's more than a touch of MV about that rear end. I mean, the, the Chinese do like to copy. You know, you can't deny the Chinese have been known throughout the years to copy design elements, but uh, I think they've come out with something pretty unique here. I don't think they've borrowed too much from uh, other manufacturers. And I actually think it's a relatively good looking motorcycle. You could argue it's actually better looking than the 790 Duke. Actually, I think you probably could very much argue that it's better looking than the 790 Duke. The rear tail light is full LED with like these LED bars. And I actually really like what they've done with this exhaust as well. I think that looks quite funky. So the engine is basically the 790 Duke engine. You know, as we know, the 790 Duke is manufactured by CF Moto. So this is exactly the same engine as which you'll find in the 790 Duke because it's the CF Moto version. The frame is also the same as the 790 Duke. It's the same frame, same engine, but it is a different swinging arm. And also the suspension is different. This has got um, KYB suspension. And as I said, it's not quite as supportive as I'd say the, the, the WP stuff. So I think, I think the handling of this bike isn't quite as sharp as the 790 Duke, but it perhaps is a bit more comfortable. Up front, we've actually, I think, got the same brakes as the 790 Duke as well. The Jejuan brakes. I think they're, they're badged as KTM on the, uh, the 790 Duke, but they've gone full on Jejuan. A little bit of faux carbon fibre on like the side panels here. And then there's quite a nice sort of swept back tank design, which actually gives you a lot of support. And you've got these other little sort of vented pieces here. I've got to say, yeah, the design on this bike is actually very, very nice. The front mudguard also has this sort of quite stylized sort of ears on the mudguard, which also sort of match what's above the light. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a very good looking motorcycle. And looking at it, it looks good quality. There's nothing sort of shouts out as being, you know, nasty. And all the frame is sort of hidden underneath these other plastic parts here. So you can't really see the frame like you can on the 790 Duke. But the, the overall quality and fit and finish, I'd say is actually pretty high. It's a riding machine. What is quite impressive with this bike is the display. Now, it's touchscreen. It's a funny shape but it's actually pretty decent. Um, you can do all sorts on it. You've got phone integration. If I go to the phone, you can see all my recent calls and it's also got Apple CarPlay, but unfortunately not Android Auto. So I, I have a proper phone. I have an Android phone, not one of those Apple things. So it doesn't have Android Auto from what I can work out, but you know, it's all touchscreen. You know, there you go, there's your Apple CarPlay into your phone settings. You know, you, you've got all sorts of stuff in here and you can link it to your headset you know and playback music take calls and you've also got another display which is this one which is a more sort of uh and i think you can also add the nav at the bottom here but you know it's quite a sophisticated display on this bike and it's all touch screen you know so yeah quite, quite pretty impressive the bike is keyless so you, it's a keyless system but you need the key to access the fuel tank but I mean, uh, a lot of lot of bikes are like that, but it is keyless. All seems to work very well. Well, provided you don't drop it. The seat on the bike actually looks nice as well. Sort of embroidered NK on the seat. It's not, there's not a great deal of padding here. That would be my only complaint. It's nice and wide. So you've got lots of support because, because it's wide, but there's a limited amount of padding here, but it's reasonable. So there she is. Let's jump back on. There's also a whole host of information on this dashboard. We can go into all sorts of settings. I mean, the interface is pretty good. It works pretty well. If we go back to the other screen, I mean, it looks a little bit, I don't know. It's, it's not the most heavily sort of stylized, very basic and to the point, very Chinese. I guess you could argue with, with that sort of standard dashboard, but it's nice if you do have an iPhone, you can have the map displayed here running all the time. So that's a nice little touch. I mean, 
you know, Apple CarPlay integration is a nice little touch, isn't it? I wish it had Android Auto. You've also got little lights here on the handlebars, which is like a status warning. No green, I mean, they will change colour if there's something wrong with the bike or there's some sort of fault code. You'll probably never see those change colour. Chinese reliability. The riding position is pretty similar to the 790 Duke, but I think it is a little bit different. I mean, it's been six months since I've tried the 790 Duke, but from memory, I think the bars are a bit further forward and you've got maybe a little bit more weight over the front of the bike on the 790 because it's, you know, it's a proper handling machine, the 790, isn't it? It's the scalpel, you know, it's incredible, incredibly taut little missile through the corners the 790 this is definitely a little bit more relaxed i'm a little bit more upright got more weight on my ass which brings me onto the seat which is nice and wide but a little bit thin so if you're going to spend a couple of hours in the saddle on this bike you're gonna you're gonna notice it in the backside but it's a, it's a pretty comfortable position whenever i review chinese bikes in the past you know everyone is very quick to comment oh chinese motorcycles you know, I've never had one of those, and there's different reasons for that, you know, obviously there's a lot of political reasons with Chinese motorcycles, or Chinese anything, I mean, Chinese products are everywhere in our lives, you can't say I won't buy Chinese because you'll have no electrical appliances in your house, <laughs> if that's your standpoint, but I think from a sort of build quality point of view, CF Moto are not like your little cheap Chinese manufacturers who like make the 125s and stuff like that. It's a proper high-tech factory, a proper outfit CF Moto. There are now 36 CF Moto dealers in the UK. So it's got a reasonably decent dealer network as well, you know, 36 dealers. So, you know, you won't have to go too far to get these serviced. And of course, it's the same, the same service components as the 790, isn't it? So, you know, relatively readily available I would I would guess Ooh, it's fruity the only thing I can't seem to do on this which you can on the KTM if you have all the the tech packs is sort of tune the electronics and separate anti-wheelie and traction control I can't seem to find anywhere to sort of adjust how much traction control you've got all of those sorts of features you know you've got obviously the rider modes but there's no way to customize those rider modes so you know again it's not a really focused performance machine like the ktm and i think that sort of plays into the way it feels to ride as well so bear that in mind so if you want to really tune your ktm and tune your tune your bike to go on track and do wheelies and and i think look at the 790 not the nk but if you just want a comfortable fast middleweight for the road that looks decent then you know consider the nk it actually rides really rather well it's also got cruise control as well standard so that could be that could be an option that the uh, advanced has i'm not sure actually whether it's just the advanced has cruise control i think they both have cruise control because I doubt they've got different switch gear you know so you've got cruise the standard Android Auto TFTs big TFTs so yeah it's a yeah, it's a well priced a well priced bike that's for sure street mode sort of 3000 revs there's a lot of grunt from this engine you know it feels fruity I mean I guess you could compare this to well, what could you compare this to? I mean, you can't say the MT-09 because that's obviously a, that's a £10,000 motorcycle. This is a £7,500 motorcycle. I mean, it's got a similar sort of feel to the MT-09. The MT-09's got a bit more power. It's a little bit more than this. But then you say, OK, MT-07, well, this is a lot more... feels a lot more punchy than an MT-07. It also feels a lot bigger, you know, perhaps a bit more growing up than an MT-07 as well. So I think this bike sits quite nicely in that sort of middleweight segment. I mean, you could say like the 8S. I mean, that's, what, how much is an 8S? About 8,000, is it? I mean, that's also a very nice you know, middleweight twin. But it's not got quite the same top end and pump. This engine, I would say, delivers a little bit more top end and feels a little bit more exciting 
than the 8S engine. The 8S engine is a very nice engine. It's got loads of drive and mid-range, but it's not quite as exciting as this engine. This is a great and absolutely fantastic middleweight engine and probably my favourite out of all of them, if I'm honest. It depends really if you're happy to have a Chinese built motorcycle, I guess, at the end of the day, because to ride this, it feels very nice. Woo! Plenty of shove. So there we go, a very quick sort of look at the NK. Um, I've, I've done a fair few miles on it. I'm actually riding it back to KTM now, so I'm heading back to Silverstone on it. I say I've had no troubles. That, that, that blipper, where it surges as I go down, that's not right. I think there's something wrong with that. I can't see that being how it works. But I mean, and overall, everything else has been absolutely tip top, you know? Yeah, it's perhaps not quite as well fueled as the KTM. You know, some of the interface is perhaps a little bit, you know, not what you might expect from European brands, put it that way. But I think for seven and a half thousand pounds, it's really good value. I guess if you're planning on buying one of these, what you got to think, I don't know what the resale value would be like. So it may be, let's say 1500 quid cheaper than the 790 by the time you put the packs on it. But what's the resale value going to be like in a couple of years time on this compared to the KTM? I don't know. I don't know. But it's something to consider, isn't it, before parting with your money. But uh, there you go. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I will be back, of course, on something else very cool very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.